Okay, this is a brief discussion of your syllabus for CIT 219, which is Internet Protocols. And this is the syllabus for the fall 2024 semester, and this class is 100% online. My name is Wayne Beach, and I'm your instructor. Um, I work full-time in Central IT at the University of Kentucky and have since um, 1985. I've also been an adjunct faculty member for BCTC and its predecessor, LCC, since the spring 1999 semester. Also in the past, when I was a graduate student at UK, I taught in their computer science department. And a little while back, I also taught a class, a graduate level class for library science, also at UK. Uh, there is a video in the Blackboard Start Here under the Instructor section that has a more detailed uh, bio on myself. My email address is wayne.beach at kctcs.edu, and that is the preferred method of communication is to send an email to that. Now, if you use Teams and see me in Teams, feel free to message me. But if I don't respond in five or ten minutes, um, it might be best for you to email me. I will see that uh, right away. Next, we have division contact information. Um, Dana Brown is our coordinator this semester, and our assistant dean is Lauren Campbell, and their contact information is provided there. Now, I'm not going to read the entire syllabus to you, but what we have next is the official course description for the class. Um, you can read that yourself, and there's also a note that this is a three-credit hour class. As far as prerequisites, you have to have successfully completed um, CIT 161 or have my consent. Next, we have the course learning outcomes, which used to be called the course competencies. Basically, what these are is if you participate in the class, you do your homework, you do well on your exams and activities, and successfully complete the semester, then this is a list of things that you should be able to describe and or do upon completion of the class. Uh, why does it matter uh, in networking? You often have to debug communications with um, an internet connection or an application talking to another application or talking to a server. And to do that, you need to be familiar with the various protocols and then also need to be able to use a protocol analyzer to examine packets so that you can try to debug and see what's going on. Um, as far as pro protocol analyzers, um, you know, almost every week, if not every week, you will be having at least one assignment that requires you to use Wireshark, which is one of those uh, very popular protocol analyzers. As far as attendance and participation, since this is an online class, the way attendance will be counted and the way you can actively participate in the course is by regularly checking your email, regularly logging into Blackboard and looking at any new content or announcements that appears there, and by completing all of your assignments by the due date specified. Next we have a section on accommodations. If a student needs accommodations to be made in the class so that the student can be successful, those are not worked out directly with the instructor. Those are worked out with the Student Accessibility Services Office. If you feel there is an accommodation that needs to be made for you, you will talk to the SAS office and they will decide if and what accommodations need to be made. They will then communicate to me via a formal letter that identifies the student and accommodation or accommodations that need to be made for that student. And then I will, of course, make those accommodations. 
Contact information, if this is needed, appears in the last sentence of this section. As far as course materials, uh, the first two paragraphs are a standard statement that are put in all um, syllabuses uh, that require use of a computer. And basically, it's telling you that you need a computer, a webcam, and a high-speed internet connection uh, for most of your classes. And for some classes, um, I believe this one included, a Chromebook will probably not be sufficient because I'm pretty sure there is not a version of uh, Wireshark that runs on a Chromebook. So you'll need access to a computer um, other than a Chromebook. And there's also mentioned here that BCTC does have a laptop loaner program that might be of use to you if you only have a Chromebook. Specifically for this course, you will need a Mac OS, Windows, or Linux computer, or a VM running one of those operating systems that is capable of running the Wireshark packet tracer, as well as a command line interface packet tracer tool, uh, TCP dump for Unix, Linux, and Mac, and WinDump for Windows. You also have a Blackboard account that you will be using quite a bit and an email account that was provided to you by KCTCS. Uh, this course basically requires constant access to a computer and high-speed internet to complete your assignment and mobile devices are not going to satisfy all the components of this course. Uh, you're expected to have access to this required technology and if for some reason you don't think that's possible you need to contact me immediately. For this class we have a required textbook which is the TCP IP guide. There's a picture of what it looks like as well as information including the ISBN 13 so that you can purchase one. My understanding is these should be available in the BCTC bookstore uh, or through Vital Source or some other method. For example, when I was first preparing for this course for the first semester I taught it, I purchased my copy off of eBay. There is an optional textbook uh, called the TCP IP Tutorial and Technical Overview. It was written by IBM. Uh, it is one of what they call Red Books, one of their technical guides. Uh, there's a picture of the cover and information on it. Uh, I will provide you with a PDF copy of this book in your course content. Uh, but if you desire a physical copy for whatever reason, the URL provided is the only place I could find it available online. And that is... Uh, where I ordered my physical copy. Next, course details. Uh, the first thing is the no-show activity, also referred to as attendance verification. Years ago, before there was online classes, the no-show policy was if a student was enrolled in your course and that student did not show up for one of the first two class meetings, then you would drop them as a no-show and they would be removed from your roster. For online classes, we have to have a no-show activity and it has to be completed by what's referred to as the no-show date. The activity that I use, I call Homework Zero and it is titled Read the Syllabus and it's basically a quote test that says I have read the syllabus and ask any questions that I might have had about the syllabus, true, false. And you need to complete that by, in this semester's case, August 27th. If you do that, you're fine. If you don't complete it by that date, you risk being dropped as a no-show. And if you are declared a no-show, you are not eligible to continue participating in the class, nor are you able to re-add the class during that semester. Next, we have graded components. Uh, this was added to syllabuses um, 
several semesters ago, and I, th I think it's a really good thing. I like it, and it's basically having to tell the student um, briefly what type of things are they going to be graded on that count towards your final grade. Um, in my case, I have things that I call homeworks. Anything I declare a homework is an assignment that was created by me. You will also have weekly quizzes that are created by me, and typically they cover the material from the previous week in the course. As far as exams, you will have a midterm exam and a final exam. Both of those exams will be created by me and will be administered via Blackboard. More specifically about the exams, your exams will be proctored using a piece of software called Respondus. Uh, to use Respondus, you have to have a computer with high-speed internet. You have to have the Respondus lockdown browser installed, and you have to have a properly working webcam and microphone. And Respondus absolutely will not work on mobile devices and I kind of, I'm not sure if it'll work on a Linux machine or not. I know it will work on Windows and Mac OS. But two or three weeks before your midterm exam, you will have an assignment that makes you install Respondus and then take a, a fake little test uh, to make sure the software is installed, make sure it's working, and to make sure you kind of understand the process before you get around to having to use it for your midterm exam. As far as grades in the course, uh, several semesters back, BCTC started making use of midterm grades. In the midpoint of the semester, the midterm date, which for the fall semester falls in October, uh, I have to enter grades. Basically what these are is if I had to give you a grade that day, what grade would I give you? And that lets you judge how you're doing in the class at the halfway point. Um, you access those through your student uh, self-service after the date um, they need to be posted, which I believe I have later. Um, as, fine as, as far as uh, final course grade, here's what makes up your grade. Your average of your homeworks is 40% of your grade. Average of your weekly quizzes is 20%. Your midterm exam is 20%, and the final 20% of your grade comes from your final exam score. And I use a traditional 90 to 100 as an A, 80 to 89 as a B, etc. grading scale. When I assign homework, I give a due date. It is usually 11.59 p.m. on that due date. Uh, if for some reason you think you're going to miss a due date for some reason and you think that might be an excused reason, for example, you're traveling for work or have required training, something like that, please be sure to contact me prior to the due date and we will decide if I'm going to consider that excused uh, and if there will be any penalty for turning it in late and also we will work out a, a new due date or a time frame for you to submit that late work. Um, when I give a due time, which I mentioned was 11.59 p.m., BCTC is in the Eastern time zone, so that is the time zone and time I'm expecting it to be due. If, for example, you are at Owensboro Community College and live in Owensboro or the Owensboro area, then that translates to 11.59 p.m. Central Time. Uh, the withdrawal policy, most of the time when people are taking 219, they're pretty close to the end of their career at BCTC, so you probably already know this. But up to the midterm date, you can go into PeopleSoft and just withdraw from a class. After that date, you have to have the instructor's permission. And the, I know there's some instructors who will basically say, don't even think about asking me after that midterm date, because I'm going to tell you no. If you stayed in the class, you're going to get whatever grade you get now. Uh, I kind of have the opposite opinion. 
I feel that the decision to withdraw from a class is a personal decision. And we may talk about, do you have a correct understanding of how you're doing in the class and that type of thing. But ultimately, if you tell me you want to withdraw from the class, I will let you withdraw. One possible exception to that is I believe after the midterm date, if you are dropping all of your classes, that you do not have to have the each instructor's permission to do that. As far as email policy, any email that you send, regardless of whether it's for work, school, or personal use, should have a meaningful subject. Something like help is not a meaningful subject because uh, it doesn't really tell anybody anything other than you need help. But we have no idea on what. Uh, for my course, I would ask that you always put CIT 219 in the subject as well as a good description of what the email is about. So the example I give here is CIT 219 problem with homework 6. I know you're one of my 219 students. I know you're working on homework 6. I know when homework 6 is due, uh, etc. Now, one thing that I have here bolded and partially capitalized is please do not use the Blackboard messaging system. Uh, I will not see that message as timely as I will if you send me a normal email. Um, also, I see a question from a student, I reply to it, and then it's going to bounce back to me because the Blackboard system and the emails it sends is not set up to be fed back into the Blackboard system and actually show up in your messages. So when it bounces, I'm going to have to look and see who the message was from. I'm going to have to look up your email address. I'm then going to have to create an email to you. I'm going to have to find the original message you sent and copy and paste it and say, hey, you asked this question, paste in your question, and then say, here's my reply. I'm going to have to go find the bounced email, copy and paste my reply that I already attempted to send into the new email and then send you the email. So it'll be a lot more timely for you and a lot less frustrating for me um, if you just use the email and not the Blackboard message system. Uh, next we have some uh, general links here, uh, things that are helpful in various aspects of being a student at BCTC. Uh, one thing I want to point out before we get to the next section is under student success there is a metering of tutoring. Uh, CIT has free tutoring that is provided either in person and or virtually for um, a lot of the introductory CIT classes. Sometimes students are able to tutor for 219. I've had other uh, general tutors who are able to assist with 161 type topics that we deal with in CIT 219 like number systems and base conversions. Uh, but the very next section we have down here, the embedded tutoring, is the last few semesters I have had an embedded tutor assigned uh, to the class or if the tutor is capable, I've taken my CIT 161 tutor and gotten permission for them to also tutor for 219. So we often have an embedded tutor that, uh, I don't want to say specializes, but is knowledgeable of the material in 219 to be able to assist other students. So I typically don't know for two or three weeks if we're going to have an embedded tutor or who that tutor will be. But when that time comes, if we do get an embedded tutor, I will make an announcement identifying the tutor, giving their email address, and giving you a link to some scheduling software that you use to set up appointments with them. Next, we have the BCTC Equity and Unity Statement that was approved in 2017. You can read through that on your own. 
Next, here are some policies, um, kind of an assortment of them. The first is the academic integrity policy. Uh, basically, here is a link to the complete integrity policy. But basically, it comes down to do not plagiarize, you know, do not be guilty of academic dishonesty, and do not misuse official artificial intelligence such as chat GPT to try to complete your homework for you. All the work you submit should be solely yours. This policy 99.9% .9 will not apply to our class. Um, it's been a long time since I've recorded a Teams meeting um, and we do not have in-person um, sessions. So this should not apply, but um, I just left it in there in case you do have classes with an in-class component. The closed campus contingency policy, because we're an online class, will not apply to us either. Basically, this is the policy of what happens if you have in-person classes, and all of a sudden there's a new horrible strain of COVID that comes out, and we have to close all the classroom buildings, all of campus, like we did back in 2020 and 2021. Uh, so it explains how classes would transition from in-person to 100% online. And again, since our class is 100% online, this will not affect us at all. Finally, the last thing I have here is the tentative course schedule. So it has week by week the dates of the week and topics that we will be covering. I've been teaching this class or its predecessor for at least 15 years. So this should be pretty accurate. A couple of things to point out down here in week eight, we have our midterm exam. It will be proctored and it will be administered uh, Monday through Thursday of that week. And then down here at the bottom, we have the final exam. The final exam will be given during finals week. Specifically, you will be allowed to take it at your convenience anytime you would like between Monday and Thursday of finals week. And again, I don't know if I said this or not, it is comprehensive and it will be proctored. So that's as brief as I can make it discussion of your CIT uh, 219 syllabus. If you have any questions, please email me and ask those questions.